nephrin are the cells of the kidneys about a million or 1.2 million inside one kidney imagine that so the cells of the kidneys are actually called nephrons and we'll see why this diagram is important and then we will extract this side of the diagram you see this uh, we call it the Bowman's capsule. We'll extract it and then talk about it in details. Why? Because that is what we want here. Because that's now here. So we will have two, uh, the blood vessels that supply the kidneys. Then we have this filtration that is happening here. And then this carries all the products to the urine. So you understand why I'm, uh, I do these two uh, diagrams as we go ahead. Now, kidneys, those two bean-shaped uh, organs, straight uh, back into your, near your, your, your spine. Okay, they protrude next to the spine. Uh, towards uh, the back and when people suffer from kidney problems or infections they start saying oh you know what i have back pains i have these chest pain uh, these waist pains and all that i cannot sit for long that is actually an indicator of kidney problems because there's something called referred pain you don't expect if your heart is uh, aching or you're having a problem you don't expect the heart to be painful you don't feel pain in the heart okay you don't feel a heartbreak <laughs> when you have a heart problem what you feel is pain that radiates to the left arm to the back why is it so? It's because the nerve that supplies the heart, the heart muscles is the same nerve that supplies the left hand and also the upper part of the back. That happens the same way to the kidneys. If you have a kidney problem, you will not feel pain in the kidneys. So stop telling us, Niko Nashida, kidney. You, how do you know? The pain that you're feeling in your waist or when you're trying to sit, you're feeling pain. Uh, that is actually a uh, pain that is coming from the kidneys because it's a referred pain. The nerves that supply the kidneys also supply the back, uh, the lower back to be specific. Uh, and that's how you get to feel uh, that pain. So that's called the referred pain. Now, those two organs are very important in the body because... They are actually the renal system. We call them the renal system. And they are very important because they are the ones that control a lot of things. For those students who come here, this is the easiest way to remember the functions of the kidneys. A wet bed. It's that simple. A wet bed. <laughs> to my answer. <laughs> so in case you are struggling with, oh, what is the function of the kidneys? A wet bed. Is it an acronym or is it a mnemonic? So A for acid-based balance, W for water and fluid balance, E for electrolyte balance, the sodium, the potassium, the hydrogen, the bicarbonates, all of them fall under the E. And then T for toxin elimination. Toxins elimination. Okay, so when you write down that word, a wet bed, it becomes easier for you to understand this or to remember this. And then B for uh, blood pressure regulation. So the kidneys actually regulate blood pressure, in case you didn't know. And this is the reason why kidney failure actually causes uh, problems with, uh, with blood regulation. So you cannot have uh, stable blood pressures because when you have high blood volume or your blood pressure is going up, uh, the other time we talked about uh, the RAS system. When we were talking about the, the liver and estrogen, you remember that, the RAS system? We mentioned uh, this system uh, that the kidneys regulate blood pressure through that uh, RAS system, the renin, aldosterone, angiotensin system. So those who are here uh, understood that. If you did not see that, you can actually go back and see how estrogen causes the liver problems. You'll see that system is there. And then, of course, E is EPO. EPO is erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is, uh, erythropoietin is, uh, is the hormone that regulates blood, uh, blood volume. So when you have anemia, when you have low blood volume, the erythropoietin instructs the bone marrow to actually produce red blood cells and your blood volume goes up. That's how people survive from anemia. And that's the reason why if you have kidney problems, you will end up having anemia. Because erythropoietin is a hormone that is produced by the kidneys. So when the kidneys are damaged, this hormone starts to go down, being diminished. You don't instruct the bone marrow to produce red blood cells, you go into anemia. So that's how. And then the D is, of course, vitamin D synthesis. Now, vitamin D plays very important roles. One is, of course, bone development and all that, and bone strength. And number two, vitamin D is actually your immunity. So if you have failing kidneys, you expect to have in recurrent infections because of low vitamin D. You expect to have very weak bones and bone diseases because vitamin D plays a very important role in depositing calcium from blood into the bones. And then you can also expect high calcium levels in blood, which you call hypercalcemia. Why? Because you're not able to deposit this calcium from blood into the bone. So the kidneys are very important. So a wet bed is what you need to understand as the functions of the kidneys. Now, the kidney is, has cells that are called nephrons, the way I told you. So the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. Now the nephron is divided into different parts and I will show you through the diagram so that you can actually understand it. But I don't want you to cram 
uh, this diagram. I want you to understand it and then we can move. So this is basically how one cell in the kidney looks like. And that one cell, you see, uh, one kidney has more than a lot of millions of cells. What, like 1.2 to, to 3 million cells in one kidney. So these are the cells that we're talking about. This is the structure of one cell, which is called a nephron. Now, here is where it starts from. This is where the filtration happens. So we call this the Bowman's capsule. However, I want you to take note of this blood vessel that is supplying blood in and the one that is supplying blood out. Now, A comes before E. So therefore, this is afferent arterial. And this is the efferent arterial. So A and then E. Once you've understood that, we can simply move. So, from the renal arteries, the blood vessels, that arteries that supply the kidneys, this is what is coming in, the renal artery. Comes in with blood, and I want you to note this, that this afferent arterial is wider. Why is it wider? And the E is narrower. Why? Because blood that is coming into the kidneys has to be a lot of blood and then going out it has to be narrow to create a pressure difference so that we can actually actuate the filtration process. So that is so intentional that the afferent arterial has to be wider and the afferent arterial has to be narrower so that we create the pressure difference which will help us in filtration of blood because we're going to filter electrolytes, we're going to filter water and nutrients into this tubule so that we get urine out through these uh, collecting ducts. Okay, so that's the function of the kidney to just uh, make urine by filtering blood. So the filter that is coming out of blood is actually what that is going to go out as urine. Now, this is the Bowman's capsule, the one that is holding the glomerulus. This thing here, or this filter here, is called glomerulus. I want you to hold on to that name because you'll see the causes of kidney failure are actually sclerosis of these glomerulus. What is sclerosis? Hardening and forming of a scar. So when you affect this, when you cause inflammation in the glomerulus, that is the problem. That's where filtration starts to become a problem. Now when you alter this, this is like a sieve. When you create larger pores in this sieve that is called the glomerulus, that means you'll end up filtering those things that cannot be filtered normally. For example, glucose. So the kidneys do not filter glucose. So if you find glucose in urine, of course it's a problem. Now, this will tell you that most of you who say salt is a problem, you are actually being confused because when salt comes out through urine, it's part of urine. So kidneys can actually filter salt. Therefore, you cannot have excess salt in the system when you have functional kidneys. And these kidneys, remember one of the functions, the awet bed, E is electrolyte balance. And one of the electrolytes is sodium. Another one is chloride. And salt is sodium chloride. So when you have a functional kidney, definitely you will filter out excess sodium. You will not reabsorb it through uh, this and then it will go and comes out through urine. That is important. So that controls salt burden, balance. Sorry. However, if sugar comes out of the kidneys, that is what we call glucosuria and that is a problem. That is a medical problem. So you are suffering. So therefore sugar cannot leave the body until you get to either fast or work out so intensely. But salt can leave the body through urine and that's the function, the normal function of the, of the kidneys. So then when did you start blaming salt for hypertension? Yet salt can be regulated by the kidneys. Your problem is not salt. Your problem is a messed up kidney. So now you cannot filter salt. And then you blame salt because it is the lesser evil. But you defend sugar because the food industry has made you uh, get convinced that salt is the criminal, but sugar is the, is the good thing. However, if you have high glucose in blood, now this is why it gets interesting. You have high glucose in blood, which you call hyperglycemia. Do you know how we lower it down? We give you sodium chloride, which is called nomosaline. That is salt. So then how did salt become important in handling sugar, but the same, same salt is a problem in hypertension? Hypertension is a sugar problem, not a salt problem. So you blame salt for what sugar cost you. And sugar is number one in the causes of kidney failure. So when you have dying kidneys because of sugar, now you are unable to excrete salt. And now that is valid. You can now blame salt later on. But the major cause of kidney problem is sugar. Okay? And it's the function of the kidney to, to filter the salts. So this is the Bowman's capsule. This is the glomerulus. This is the Bowman's capsule. And then, of course, we have the distal convoluted tubule or the proximal, sorry, and then we have the loop of Henle, and then we have the distal convoluted tubule. So we have the proximal, the distal, the loop of Henle, and then the collecting duct. 
Okay? So understand that. Once you've understand that, you've understood the structure of the cell of the kidney. This is where our problems will start in because I'm showing you that diagram intentionally to actually take you to the Bowman's capsule. So we've talked about the glomerulus coming into the, the filter. The filter coming into this holder, which is the, uh, the Bowman's capsule. And this is where filtration is happening because as blood is coming from the afferent arterial, it goes through the glomerulus and then gets out through the efferent arterial. There's a pressure difference there that causes filtration. But you will see, hypertension is also a cause of kidney disease. And I want you to know this. When blood is coming in and going out, already the efferent arterial is narrower. But the interesting part is, sugar causing, causes more narrowing of the efferent arterial because of sugar deposits into that uh, artery. Now you create a lot of pressure in the glomerulus, and now, the first time you will experience an increased filtration rate. But that increased filtration rate will actually open up the pores, the sieve. Remember our glomerulus is our sieve. So you will open up the sieve and the holes in the sieve will be bigger. When they become bigger, you can filter sugar. You can filter proteins. And that's why number one or another, side, uh, another symptom of kidney disease is actually protein in urine. So when you start filtering glucose in urine, proteins in urine, and the major protein being albumin, so when you end up having albuminuria, albumin in urine, and glucosuria, glucose in urine, we start suspecting this person must have an acute kidney injury, or if it has taken long and they are diabetic for a long period of time, of course, the suspect has to be now chronic kidney disease.